five, four, three, two, one. Full course yellow is deployed. Full course yellow is deployed. Yes, hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Full Course Yellow in Pit Lane's weekly get-together. It was Wednesday night soiree where just a few of us get together and have a chat about all things motorsport and beyond in Pit Lane. Of course, coming to you tomorrow night, Thursdays at 9.30, right across Melbourne, free to air on Channel 31, Australia's most watched community broadcaster. Australia's one of only two community television stations left in the country now. Hello to everybody at the Liberal Party. Thank and thank you for all you've done for community media and the country in general. Now, coming up on the program tonight, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the weekend down at Phillip Island for a start. That was uh, that was interesting. Doc and I went down on the Friday, but uh, big crowd, uh, good vibes. Basically, everybody was uh, everybody was very impressed with the weekend, and we'll talk about that on the show. We'll also give a bit of a preview to what's coming up this weekend out at. Uh, and at Topor in New Zealand, the supercars are all over there now, and they're getting ready to uh, they're getting ready to run this weekend as well. We'll also catch up with any Formula One news, and uh, well, Doc's not here, so we probably won't talk too much if at all about MotoGP because I don't know unless uh, unless Pete or Mark or Richard know anything about uh, been keeping up with MotoGP. I've kept up with virtually none of it at all. So I know we had uh, I know we had the American Grand Prix on the weekend, but I didn't see any of it because it was about three in the morning. But anyway, joining us this week on the program, let's join the panel. We've got Peter Johnson, we've got Mark Jones, we've also got Richard Outram, and uh, guys, if you are unmute your unmute your mics, we will uh, say hello and find out how are you all. All right. Good how evening. How's everyone? Let's talk about uh, let's talk about Philip Island on the weekend. I don't don't know how many of you watched it. Um, Pete, did you have a look at any of it at all? On the I watched Saturdays, um, and I watched one race on Sunday. It appears with um, Seven Plus. They don't. I have a problem getting on Seven Plus live. Um, and then I put really hard to find. I had the same yeah, problem Saturday yeah. as well. I went looking yeah. for it and it was like, and it came up and it was like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not yeah. obvious. You've got to, you've got to hunt for it. It's a real yeah. sort of, it doesn't just sort of show itself up there. You've got to hunt yeah. around for it and go through so many layers of different things until you eventually find that channel and then click on it. And then suddenly it's like, ah, there it is. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, it's very hard, very hard to navigate. So I went, I was I went out on Sunday, but then I watched um, uh, the first race on Sunday, but but of the TCRs that is. Um, but I, I, I the the um, the second race wasn't up till. Well, the second be. race it was really funny because the scheduling was a bit strange because the second TC or the, you know, the <laughs> what it was you know, eventually the third TCR race. So you know, on yeah. the Sunday the sort of the feature race, if you like. <laughs> Right at the end of the day, and once again, and it's funny, Roland Dane mentions it in his uh, column in Speed Cafe as well. The fact that you know they had a record crowd there in terms of the Speed Series. It was a really good crowd for all all three days. And as he pointed out, you know most of the people had gone home by that stage. And we're finding this, we're finding this everywhere. Finding it in Speedway, finding it in drag racing, finding it in circuit racing. People just don't stay. To the end of the day, there's the hardcore tragic like us who will stay there till the very last. But the vast majority of people, you know, they'll come in at about sort of 10, 10 30, 11 o'clock. They'll watch sort of, you know, three or four races. And then sort of at 2 30, 3 o'clock, they, they take off, regardless of whether there's a main race to come. I mean, they, they I suppose we, because we're all so time poor, it's, uh, in fact, one of, one of my friends was down there. And he said, yeah, like, oh, yeah, I went down and you drove all the way down to Phillip Island. I said, yeah, really wanted to go down and see it. Drove down there, had a, had a look at it, stayed about an hour and a half. And uh, it was really great. But I had to get back to had to get back to Melbourne because I was yeah. going out on the Saturday night. So I think a lot mm -hmm. of people are in that position at the moment. And I think they've got a the sport really needs to look at how they can condense these meetings a lot more because, yeah, they started. Some of them start at like 8 30, 9 o'clock in the morning, and they go through until you know the last vestige of light yeah. in the evening. And then the spectators just don't hang around 
And on Saturday, oh, but... um, I realise that safety is important and all that, but um, the, the way we're treated, like on seven seven mate, it was on live for mm. Saturday afternoon, but um, and they shortened all the races except for the um, GT race, you know. On, on well, the GT race was the cause of the shortening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think if they're going to... Ben wiping the uh, Mercedes against the wall, and technically yeah. the race was shortened because it had to be red flagged. Yeah, yeah. Um, except for the final GT race, they shortened all the rest of them to fit in to the TV window. Oh, and, you mean yeah. GT4? The, no, the okay. final race of the weekend... Cause I, I can oh, get sorry, on... Sunday. Oh, my yeah, goodness. So, on no, no, on <laughs> Saturday. On Saturday. On Saturday. Yeah. Oh, well, GT4 was the last race of the day on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that appeared not to be shortened, but the rest of them did. And and there was only like 11 minutes of racing in, in I think, in um, the TCR race on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, well, it's a um, it's a problem. It's a problem that they've got, and uh, once again, you know, Roland Dane has pointed out that they need to do something at uh, at Phil. They're making you know, huge, making huge changes at Phillip Island all over. Every, every time you go down there now, there's another change that you have a have a look. They've put in uh, they they've put in some uh, some uh, some high grip uh, asphalt round uh, around Honda or the suit of the corner formerly known as Honda Miller Corner now the hairpin. Um, they've got high, some high grip sort of green uh, uh, asphalt going around. They've got two. There's two Joker laps now with there. I'm not sure what the go is with that, but they had the like the Joker lap for the for the for the uh, Moto GP. Uh, they extended that, and now there's a shorter one as well. So whether there's two different sorts of um, Joker laps, I'm not sure. But there's two. There's two run, and they came in very handy at times because people going too hot into uh, into Honda. <laughs> now, if they uh, if they just leave it, they've got sort of you know a big runoff area that they can they can just basically slow down and just take the long lap around and get out without you know totally by like, without getting bogged in the uh, in the kitty litter. But so they're doing a lot down there. But I think the the one thing that they need to do or that the, they've done nothing at all is you know people keep saying oh yeah like oh they should have supercars down there and it's the best circuit in Australia and da 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 da. The, the facilities for spectators there are just appalling. There's no there's no facilities there at all. And once again, Roland said, because we weren't down there on the on the Saturday or Sunday when they had the big crowd on both of those days. Um, the the only food that was down there is the um, in, internal cafe at the and the, the and the queues apparently stretched back for miles and miles, and they ran out of food really quickly. There were no food vans. There's no, there's no seating facilities. There's no grandstands. There's no covered areas. Yes, you can drive your car up, and it's great. That that's fantastic. That bit, but you know, if you uh, also if you're if you're over the, if you're over the, the the outside of the circuit, there's only that one bridge that you can get across, and it's a yeah. it's a huge bridge. Um, you know, Pete, if you turn, you'd have no chance of getting in. Yeah. In there because yeah you you'd have to like you'd have to get special passes to be allowed through the tunnel and yeah. when we arrived the media weren't normally we just drive in through the tunnel and we park on the inside and we can unload all of our gear and go up to the media center this time the media were parked outside and we said oh hang on we've got yeah you know, we've got cameras we've got tripods we've got to bring in it's like well sorry you have to take it over the I was furious I got there because I nearly fell down with the between yeah. my, my back and my knee and all the, and the shoulder and all the rest of it, I nearly went. I nearly took a tumble from the bloody thing. I'd have killed myself if it wasn't for a guy standing behind me who reached up and yeah. steadied me. I'd wow. have gone down. So um, Ooh. and it's a long bloody fall down there. So I was sure furious when I got to the other bloody side. And eventually yeah. we got um, they they gave us a, a a temporary pass to get the car in to unload the gear and then take it back out again. But they need another tunnel in there because yeah. it's there's a massive backlog when you're coming in when you're coming out 
They've got that one little tunnel that you can only go through one way at a time. So, you know, half a dozen cars go through and then stop and half a dozen cars go through the other it's like way. like the Grand Prix. It's like Albert Park. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. right. Too. Albert Park. Um, uh, I, I'm led to believe that the reason that the supercars don't go to Phillip Island is because um, they're charged a lot for the sanction sanction fees, the, the yeah, promoter well, fees. Uh, Lynn Fox. Andrew Fox, who was uh, who basically uh, like in the Fox and Lynn Fox, <laughs> uh, basically said, "Look, yeah, this is a this is a money making concern. Where this is, <laughs> they've got no, you know, I mean, apart from the fact we know that you know Lindsay is a is a car." For, nut and all the rest of it yeah. but he's not a motor racing nut and when we spoke to andrew years many years ago he was we were talking about the cost of philip island and he basically said this is a business investment we're investing big money into this place um this place is here because of the grand prix and the world super bikes it's a motorcycle track um it's a it's, it's a world class in his words it was a world-class venue and he said, "You don't expect, you know, the Wonthaggy Under 18s Football Club to play on the MC. Be allowed to play on the MCG." He said, "So it doesn't matter." He said, "As far as we're concerned, it doesn't matter if it's supercars, the Grand Prix, Speed Series, the Victorian State Series, or you know, the Hyundai XL Club wanting to do sprints on the day. There is a cost for hiring the venue, and that cost is the same for everybody, and you either pay it." Or you go somewhere else. It's as simple as that. So it's very, very expensive down there for for everybody. And they they said that they weren't interested in you know because uh, they tried to get uh, Philip Island to to pay up and uh, and be a part of the series. And Philip Island said, "Well, if you if you think it's such a good investment, and if you think it can make so much money, um, you run it." Well, they did for a few years, and we saw how that ended. I mean, it was nobody went down there. The corporates hated it. The television hated it. Everybody, everybody loves the circuit, but they hate going down there. There's nowhere to stay. If there is, it's bloody expensive. It's usually not of the, the, the highest quality. There's probably about two places down there, the Ramada Resort that we used to stay at, and a couple of... Uh, couple of hotels well, or one hotel I can think of. The rest of the stuff is, you know, was built in the 1950s and... And yeah, yeah, you you wouldn't you wouldn't board your dog in some of the places. And from memory, oh, I, I were, swear the I'm, last sorry, the last time Go I uh, well, the last time I stayed down there, I had to um, I had to share the place with a family of penguins, so um, that was <laughs> difficult. You got into that box as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I spend a lot of money on the penguins. They don't. It, it's a problem. It's it's a major tourism venue down there, and uh, on a weekend, I mean, you know, particularly for the, um, particularly for things like the the, the, the historics and all that, which is on a long weekend. I mean, you, you you're not if you get it, you're lucky if you get any accommodation. If you do, it's going to cost you a bloody fortune. The food down there is ridiculously expensive. Um, it's a, it's just a very expensive, you know, sort of area place to run at. So, as great as the circuit is, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a problem. Let's have a bit of a run around and uh, have a look. We got Box by C who's joining us. We got Box, Box, Box once again. G'day, Box. How are you? Evening to you too. Uh, Jared saying need to promote Mark Cars more as a step up from TA two. Yeah, I'm. I've got my worries about Mark Cars. I just once and you know, yet another one make series. Uh, not uh, they're beautiful cars, great cars. Nothing wrong with the cars, and thankfully they are making you know cars that do fit a category now. They're making some sports sedans, and that's uh, that's terrific. And then there's a beautiful car. I had a look at the the Mustang at uh, up at Bathurst, and that was just uh, just gorgeous. They do a fantastic job, but. Uh, yeah, once again, more categories, more one mate series. Um, there, anyone going to New Zealand not happy with the TV coverage? Haven't seen, um, there hasn't anything been about them. Perhaps you can, perhaps you, uh, Mark, if you could, you know, specify exactly what the problem is with that. I mean, I, I don't know, is this on KO or is it even being it televised? It is going to be on, it is going to be on KO, it's not going to be on free to air. Um, and it's going to start at six o'clock on, I think about six o'clock on Saturday, six o'clock in the morning on yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Time and zones, yeah. 10 o'clock on 
because the first practice session, our time, is 10.55, so 10 o'clock on Friday, I believe. Or... Yeah, well, obviously, it's, it's, you know, it's the, the, the time difference there. They're, they're a couple of hours uh, ahead of us, and they're starting uh, They're starting early. It'll be interesting to uh, see, because very few of the, the drivers have, have driven there. I mean, I spoke to, I caught up with, uh, literally bumped into Tom Randall at the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Expo on Thursday, and uh, he's driven there in the Formula Toyota in the year that he won that series over there. So he's he's had experience. But then we spoke to Jackson Evans, uh, who is a New Zealander, of course, and uh, at Phillip Island. And the, the full interview that full interview is now up on the Impit Lane YouTube channel, where we ask him about it. And he says, "No, he's I've never actually raced there. He's I'm a, I'm a local, but I've never raced there." So he was looking forward to it, but. Uh, yeah, Tom was uh, Tom was looking forward to it. Says it's a great place, but uh, I think uh, a bit concerned. I think they're all a bit concerned about passing opportunities there. So it'll be interesting to see what the uh, what the racing looks like. But uh, it's certainly been so far. It seems very successful in terms of the crowd. The place is booked out. Um, I think it's a little bit like if you have a look at it. It is, in fact, a little bit like Phillip Island. It's a it's a tourist area. There's not a lot of infrastructure. It's not a big city or anything like that. So, you know, everybody's got to drive quite a distance to get to it. And uh, once you're there, it's uh, you're at the mercy of the of the tourism operators. But uh, also, it could, depending on what the weather like, it could get bloody cold there too. Judging by uh, some of the some of the, the things I've seen and some of the comments from New Zealanders. So, I don't know if any of our key where you have viewers who occasionally join us are watching tonight, but if they are, let us know what the weather's going to be like on the weekend. Mark saying, Phillip Island track like driving on the moons. Yeah, it is as it's a, it's smooth as, but it's also very, very grippy and it was causing all sorts of problems particularly for the Trans Am guys. Um, their tyres were absolutely ripped to pieces at the end of the end of the racing but once again the racing was really good Fantastic. in pretty much all the classes yeah. Yeah. um good field oh, second gt uh race on sunday of um with the um uh, uh, miles and schumacher um running that was glorious to watch those two Great um two, a, a pair of um slightly older cars in the audis but there were certainly um, yeah, the Audis won't go away, will they? I mean, Audi is sort of, you know, Audi have watched oh, their hands in sort of GT racing and they're racing in general, apart from Formula One. <laughs> Incidentally, the latest news from Formula One with Audi is that the rumour going around is that their, their chosen drivers, their preferred drivers, are Nico Hulkenberg and Carlos Sainz. Nice. They're yeah, the yeah, men who that. they apparently, the, according to some of the German media, they're the two people that they want in their car when it eventually rebrands as Audi, which will mean that, um, well, for a start, Valtteri Bottas, I mean, his supercar career might start earlier than he wanted. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Hey, he likes oh. the place, so, yeah, bring him on down. Yeah. Um, Jared say whoever buys Lang Lang can build... Yes, Lang Lang, the, the, the old uh, Holden Proving Ground, is, is up for sale again. Was bought by a, a company called Vinfast from Vietnam as they were going to use it as a proving ground. They were going to enter the Australian market and use it as a proving ground. That never happened, so it's for sale. And I think we mentioned it last week. The interesting thing is that the uh, the guy who's selling it, the, the real it's estate Lee agent, yeah, is Lee Holdsworth. Um, and we, we spoke <laughs> we up with Lee at Bathurst and uh, had a chat to him. He was talking about his uh, work in real estate now. That, that was his, you know, that was basically his focus now. He was basically a part-time driver and, uh, he was he was concentrating on his career, and his career was at the the high end of uh, corporate real estate, and so he's responsible uh, for that uh, for that venue. I don't think it will be a, a, a circuit. I think it's because you, you see the suburban sprawl. It's a long, long way from Melbourne. It's a long, long way from anywhere, but it doesn't seem to stop any anything. And I mean, it's it's you know, there's lots of lots of native you know vegetation and forestry around there and uh yeah it's 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 probably a it's probably it would it would make a great uh venue someone said oh yeah you could run uh you could run nascar on the speed well no you couldn't no. Cool. <laughs> um, wow. brett you and i could buy it and we could lease it out to car clubs <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, so. I, 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 I look, think we I, could go broke doing that, I, couldn't we? I just, I just found $2, so we're, we're, yes. we're almost, 
we're almost there. Um, yeah, it now, would be, it I, would be a I, great I imagine benefit. maybe the um the the Fox family might come around and kneecap you for trying to cut it, take away some of their business, though. On the, that would be the other thing too. On the road. I imagine, yeah, I imagine there would be a there would be an outcry from the from Fox, um, and he of course has you know considerable influence uh, with both political parties, but particularly with the government of the day right now. He'd be very, very upset about that. It, I, I think it'd be a, a better a better alternative than Avalon. I, I still don't think Avalon's going to get built. It'll be interesting to find out. They they have uh, uh, Sinelvora, the, the new CEO of the uh, of Motorsport Australia, uh, has come out and said that yes, we are we are ploughing on. We are, and he he actually said, you know, I want to see you know construction start this year. Uh, I'm afraid that, you know, and I don't know, Richard, Richard, you might be in this position as well. I'm going to be very surprised that if, if this thing ever does get built, even if they start now, I don't know whether I'm going to be capable enough or still here. Say, it it will finished. get built. We've built, we bought a thousand shovels, so I can now guarantee you it will be built. Oh, this is going to be season six of Utopia, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's, right. it's, not, it's not that. It was very much a private. It was very much a passion for um, for, for James Molino and Daniel Andrews. Uh, they were very much behind it. Uh, but now that they're mm. gone, and in, in, in the case of you know, the state of the Victorian economy at the moment, I mean, with the cancellation, they cancelled... The, uh, they cancelled the Commonwealth Games, and it would be with there's an election around the corner. The uh, the, the the polls are saying that uh, you know Labor is now in trouble, despite the fact that you know the, the Liberals are in absolute turmoil. Uh, people are just saying we don't care, <laughs> we don't care how we we don't care who runs the party. Yeah, like you know Kermit the Frog could run the bloody party. We don't care. We want to change and. Uh, any 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 government that came in now and said we're we're prepared to invest you know one point seven billion dollars to build a car racing facility, um, you know on Lindsay Fox's land <laughs> that will eventually fall into the ownership of Lindsay Fox. But yeah, I don't think it's going to happen for now. <laughs> uh, we got Box uh, saying the weather for uh, for Torpo. Uh, uh, Topo Topor is uh, top, yeah, top of seventeen overnight of four. So yeah, cold but not uh, cold but not not too uh, too bad. Uh, Tony Quinn still yeah, QR QR is good oh, enough. QR. So, yeah. Oh, the the um the the upgrades at QR are uh, continuing are plenty. Like um, we uh, we were there racing last weekend, sorry, weekend before that now, um. And uh, the car park, uh, uh, like the the rear, uh, the paddock area behind the pit, uh, behind the um, the garages has now been paved completely. Um, like there's no grass there anymore. It's all. Um... Yeah. Oops, Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, yeah, there's been a bit of freezing out at the moment tonight. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> He'll pop back in hopefully, hopefully soon. Yeah, well, it's the same with Phillip Island. I mean, all that area out the back where we used to park or where we regularly park, you know, when when they will let us come through the tunnel, um, all of that, as you know, Richard, has, has always yeah. been sort of you know just dirt, dirt roads and dirt, you know, like unpaved areas. Now that's completely paved. It's uh, all individual mm. parking bays, uh, bays laid out. So it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's re it's really uh it's it's really very very good quality out there. So they've they've improved it for the competitors. They've improved it for you know for, for the safety level and on the track itself. Um, what they haven't uh, what they haven't done is there's still the facilities just you know for <clears throat> for spectators are still it's basically you know, a racetrack in the middle of a paddock really. And it's I'm sorry to say. It is a bland track, really. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think it's a good track. It certainly produce, always produces good racing. I, I think it's probably, you know, I, but it's a, it's, it's a, the, the problem of running the supercars down, they never made it because as Tony Cochran used to say, take the track and put it somewhere else. If you had this track and you had it, you know, somewhere where people actually lived, 
um, and that would be terrific. But it's you know it's a two hour drive from Melbourne. It's and even though it's only you say okay, it's only two hours from Brisbane. It, um, it's a horrible drive down there. It's just it's a boring. It's a boring drive down there. It's pretty much, you know, there's, there's no major stop. But if you get a big crowd down there, yeah. even for the historics, I mean, yeah, we've we we spent four and five hours just, you know, getting home. I thought we were sorry. I thought we were talking about QR. Sorry. Oh, QR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I went back to the market back with it again. Look, I've I've always bemoaned the fact that uh, the uh, they got rid of the big worm on the way back from Phillip Island. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. That's, yes, that's yeah. a big worm. I remember that. I, I, I once again, I this was a, this was something uh, with uh, was it Derek Bell? I think it was with Derek <laughs> Bell. There were two things with Derek Bell when I when I interviewed him at, from from Motor Classica because um, he was heading down to Phillip Island to do something, and I said to him, there were two things I said to him. I said, yeah, like. Uh, coming ha coming out of the uh, the exhibition gardens, the exhibition buildings in Melbourne, at uh, <coughs> after dark, um, keep an eye out for the fruit bats, the giant bats. And he thought I was having. He said, "Oh, yeah, oh these are like your drop bears, aren't they? Oh, I don't know about them. No, they're bats, and they're about you know, like, you know, four or five foot across." Yeah. You know, oh. Yeah, and then I told him about the giant worm, and he didn't believe that. He said, yeah, "Those are." Giant. And then when I saw him this time, he went. Yeah. Bloody the, the butt for me, and then I go down. He said, There's a bloody giant worm, <laughs> but they definitely Apparently need more accommodation. Sorry, Mark. Oh, I was just going to say, the um, the, the worm struggled to find employment since leaving a current affairs election coverage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> yes, it's yes, just um, yeah. Celebrate the worm, but I never went into I never went into the worm. Uh, the worm is so you go past, you have a look at the thing. Who the hell would go to that? But now it's gone. Oh. So that's a. That's I was a always shame. distracted by a chocolate factory. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I that's think another, I that once. And that's another problem: is the traffic getting in and out off the island? Yeah, yeah. There's no yeah. way they're ever going to make a <clears throat> two lanes, even in one direction. And I think, oh, that's it. yeah. I mean, it's, it's a problem. I mean, even getting just in, if you when you drive out of the place and you drive past, you know, what, even once you get off the island on that you know, single lane bridge, and it's interesting. I don't know. It could become a problem because when I we went down there, they had um they had load limits of you know uh, the the rejigging the bridge to make it safe basically, and they had load limits, and it's like oh gee, you know, if you're going over there with a you know, a B double transporter, it might be, uh, things might be interesting because you've got no alternatives. I mean, that's yeah. the problem. That bridge goes down, um, yeah. that nobody gets Stroke. on the rock. That's, that's the end. Stroke. Yeah. yeah, that's and, it. Yeah, think, <coughs> we'll have to yeah. keep any American container ships away from it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, and I think, um, yes, people are leaving early from other venues, but I think that's one of the reasons. <laughs> particularly that they leave early from <coughs> Phillip Island to beat the traffic coming yeah, out. Yeah, we do it all, we do it all yeah. the time. We, I, yeah. I always say, you know, we'll either leave very early or leave very late. I mean, if you yeah. if, if you leave it you know, with, with a big meeting um, and really apart from the bike, see the bikes are the bikes are, 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 are okay because there's so many bikes down there and they don't have the same problem with the traffic jam. They get out on and off pretty quickly. Yeah. And you know the, the people who go down by car are caught in a bit of a traffic jam, but the, you know a lot of people on the bikes, not a problem. But for the uh, for when the supercars were down there, but particularly for a really big crowd for the historics, getting on and off the place is so. I usually just turn the other way, go into Cows. I sorry, go in yeah, go down to Cows and you know hang around and have a few drinks at the pub and go and have uh, have a, have dinner there and leave about 7:30 or something and by that time the the traffic's usually uh usually sufferable but uh, then you've got of course the long drive back in the dark um back to melbourne and dodging the kangaroos and all sorts of uh Stuff like that. Anyway, let's uh, move on from that. That's that's Philip Island. I, I thought it was a really good meeting. Um, they yeah. promoted it. They got a good crowd. Um, so it it shows once again if you, 
if you if you promote the thing, if you put on, uh, if you have good racing, the GT fours were uh, that was a very encouraging turnout for GT fours, and hopefully we'll see more of them. Uh, Stefan Rattel was down there. We didn't see Stefan, but um, he was. He mightn't have been there Friday, but uh, we probably wouldn't have caught up with him anyway. We had so many people to talk to. So we've got uh, we still got coming up on the program the full interview with Carl Cox as well, the DJ. Terrific guy. We just um, Doc Doc sort of cornered him. I was queuing up uh, to get some first. One of the, the famous uh, bacon and egg and cheese rolls with the best, in in my opinion, the best uh, f- the best racetrack food in Australia. And uh, so I was queuing up to get that, and uh, I, I looked over and suddenly you know Carl, um, you know Doc's got uh, Carl Cox in a headlock sort of thing. <laughs> Um, I'm not letting him get I'm not away. Touching that. I'm not going there. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he was a, he was a, he was a ter- he's a terrific guy. He is so mad keen on the sport, and uh, so we we talked. You know, like where we had out the front, he was just standing there. And we talked for about twenty five minutes out the front with with him there about this. Said, well, we want to catch up for an interview, and yeah, you know, like oh yeah, not a problem. And we caught up, and we did about sort of. We ended up doing about uh, half an hour or so with him. Uh, talking about uh, his uh, his race team and his, his love of the sport and his drag racing. He's got four drag cars now. He's got the Capri that he ran at uh, at the Bend a couple of weeks back. He's got a Barracuda. Four Pro in Australia. Car. What's that? Did you yeah, say yeah. four in Australia? Uh, no, he's got he, – at oh, the moment, okay. he's got, uh, one, of the, one of the Pro Mod cars is on its way here. He's got um, one Pro. The Cuda is uh, in mm. England and a, he races uh, – or tested at the Santa Pod last year, but he's also bought a, a player <laughs> and he's bringing that to Australia as well because he got caught. He, he basically got, you know, of, of all the places to get caught when you're a millionaire DJ and you can live anywhere in the world you like, COVID happened and he ended up spending two years in Frankston. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he seemed to like it and he, he, he sort of, you know, and he, he likes the... He likes the drag racing scene over here. He ran a lot at Calder and all of it. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a really nice guy. So we'll run that as well. As I said, we put the Jackson Evans uh, stuff up. But I uh, didn't see Stefan Rattel, but it was interesting that Stefan said that you know, now that SRO are running GT mm-hmm. Racing, that they're, they're using their leverage and their contacts around the world to try and get sort of, you know, more cars in both GT3 and GT4 here in Australia, and he said, you know, he said, we, you know, it's great to see the Ferraris, but we want to see a couple, we want to see some Lamborghinis, we want to see the new Aston Martins, we eventually want to see the Mustangs, and the, uh, and hopefully the Corvettes as well, so I want really to see big Japanese future. cars. What's that? I want to see some Japanese cars. Well, he mentioned that as well, and yeah, like it was, uh, and the problem is they make, uh, on the weekend with the opening round of the Super GT, uh, which was which was fan, which was fantastic uh, to see those cars back again, and they and Nissan debuted a GT three hundred uh, uh, Nissan Z, uh, which mm-hmm. looked amazing, looked absolutely fantastic. But I think it's made specifically because GT three hundred is sort of an amalgam of different things that they build to their regulations, plus GT three cars, and they build them to sort of a balance of performance based on GT3, but they're not actually homologated GT3 cars. So unfortunately at the moment, there's the, the Lexus is homologated, but that's out of date. The NSX is no longer being produced, so that's out mm-hmm. of date and that's homologated. Mm-hmm. Um, Toyota, <clears throat> Toyota Supra is in GT4, so you could, you could in fact, I, I was told <coughs> that there um, there is at least one, if not two, GT4 mm-hmm. Supras on their way to Australia, and we probably will see them later on in the year. Uh, so There's also a GT4 uh, Nissan Z. The new Z has the, a GT4. That's right, yes, there is a GT, uh, GT4 in there. Um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy <coughs> said, you know, a great event at, um, at PO, better than the supercars, could be bigger with the right back. Yeah, it's not so much the backing. I think it's like it, it's – for Motorsport Australia are essentially running this, and they're um, – they they're not sort of they're not experienced in promoting a motorsport event because uh, 
a lot of people that we were down there sort of said, you know, oh yeah, we, we saw this on your show on Tuesday, Thursday night and I you know, thought we'd come down or we, you know, we heard something on, or saw something on channel seven, we were watching channel seven and watching the, the footy or something. And there was apparently an advert on came oh, on for it. So, um, you know, if you advert, if you advertise these things well in advance and you put on a, a good packed program with lots of cars, but they're going to have to, they really do have to improve the, uh, the quality of the of the experience for spectators down there because really you've just got to, if you the tip is if you're going down to Phillip Island take everything with you just just yeah just just go on down and um just go on down and take uh, take all your stuff with you take all your food take all your well, stuff and you can have a really good day I mean that's what the experienced people do they go around the back they put up a they put up a a, a marquee or they put up a, a slinger a tarp up over the car or something like that and or even a tent and they just uh sit at the side of the sit at the side of the track for the weekend and they take a barbecue along and that's the thing i mean you could actually take remember remember richard when we went down for, for the supercars and you brought you took, brought a barbecue along and what happened there what what happened Didn't they tell us to stop doing that um, yeah well, that's it. When we went down for the supercars, it was um, yeah. Rich, Richard and I went down together, and uh, Richard said, oh, yeah, "I mean, I've thrown a barbie, some portable barbie in the back, and we can we can have you know, a barbecue lunch and all that." We had a couple of you know a few cans of something nice, and when we went in there, bloody security said, "No, you can't, you can't bring that in, you can't bring that in, and you can't bring." Yeah, and it and was like, oh, yeah, okay. Wasn't that the very last time we went to a V8 supercar <laughs> meeting? I don't know why. Well, I can't imagine one. One. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I went to. Yeah, uh, that's went right. To one, uh, last year, I, yeah, last year I went to um, the Friday of the Sandown 500 because I hadn't been. <laughs> to it since that time, apart from yeah, you know, like like Pete, I hadn't, you know, apart from the the Grand Prix, um, I hadn't seen I hadn't seen uh, the, the supercars for a while, and so I went on the Friday because that was the only one I could afford, and even that on the Friday, and that's on concession, was like sixty five dollars or some ridiculous amount of money. And there were hardly any. There was hardly any supercars. From what yeah, I well, they were, all in, they were all in the, the the one thing is I was very lucky because I didn't have you could get into you could get into the paddock. That's why it cost sixty five dollars. You had to pay extra to get into the paddock. Yeah. So I got into the paddock. Um, but the good news is, like, yeah, because sort of yeah, I'm sort of known around there. But yeah. I sort of just had and I had the camera with me. Now I didn't apply for media accreditation at all, but I had a camera with me and I just sort of wandered around on or the phone. I think it was. And I just wandered around and just basically walked into garages and people said hello and nobody kicked me out. And it was only right towards the end of the day someone came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, um, are you supposed to be here and doing this? <laughs> Most and said, certainly. Yeah. And I said, no, I said I'm, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to be anywhere and doing anything. And it was like, right hang on, hang on. Didn't you learn from Ghostbusters movie that <laughs> yes, if someone exactly. asks you if you are, are you a, a god, god, you say yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they did that again in the next one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so there's um, oh, anyway. Well, well, not like not in GT three. There's nothing. There's GT four. There is an homologated homologated car but yeah toyota bmw yeah the that um there's a gt there is a gt4 version of uh of the uh 86 come whatever they whatever they call the uh the subaru toyota or oh, subaru brz the brz yep um and there is of course a gt300 version of that which i saw uh in the flesh uh several years ago at malaysia at the sepang and a beautiful looking car. And I know that uh, someone here in uh, Melbourne was building up a sports sedan version of it based on that car. And we, once again, it's another one of these sports sedans that is being, uh, that is being, being made that uh, we're never going to see. In fact, on the weekend, the Victorian State Series were down at Shannon's showroom down here at, uh, at Heatherton, uh, showing off sort of, you know, doing some promotion for a change. That was another shock to the system. They were actually doing some promotion. And uh, they had some, uh, they had some fabulous sports sedans. The, the problem was the sports sedans they were showing have never actually, we haven't actually seen them on the track as yet, or at least for a long time. Uh, the Liam Hills uh, XL, the V8 powered XL, 
was really? uh, down there. Looks absolutely amazing. Looks you know, great. Always looked great car, and looks even better now with its uh, with its bi even bigger wheels and wings and tyres and all the rest of it. Um, looks fantastic. And Francis Abib had a bright purple Falcon there, which I think might be the ex Bob Gill car. I know that he did buy that. Um, and it was, it used to look very stock. It was, that's, that's a beautifully constructed car. It was built by Peter Behag, um, who did all of the oh, stone no. rolls racing, uh, cars. And it was, it was basically a suit, an ultra lightweight supercar. It was like, let's, you know, basically let's build a supercar, but let's make it as light as, you know, we're allowed to in sports sedans and, you know, give it a bit of extra aero and some wider wheels and tires and all the rest of it. Um, but it looked like, it, it basically looked like a, a, a a supercar when you had a look at it, but um, this this thing is now in purple. It's been you know extensively modified. If it's the same car, it's been extensively modified. If it's if it's a new car, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm try I'm gonna try and get in touch with Francis and just see if we can do a um do a story on it because it looked amazing. It was a bright purple thing. If you have a look at some of, go to the Victorian Sports Sedan Association. Uh, or the Australian Sports Sedan Association Victoria Facebook page, and you'll see their gallery from there, and you'll catch those sports sedans. They looked uh, they looked a million dollars, looked really good. So uh, hopefully they'll get on the track at some stage, and we can actually see them. We can actually see them race. That would be uh, that would be nice as as well. Um, okay, uh, Mark saying saying surprise call to park has survived this long. Uh, well, they can't do anything else with it. Yeah. That's the problem. There's nothing else they can do with it. It's like, yes, you know, it's going to, be sold, going to be sold off for housing. No, they can't sell it for housing. Um, it's under the flight path at uh, Tullamarine. It's also uh, one side of it is the flight path. The other flight side of it is the high-tension power lines. Take, and the uh, rest of it's poison. The rest, <laughs> no, 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 no. That was wrong. That, I didn't say that. Yeah, um, that was a believe. tongue. I'm led to believe that that is the case. No, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I did. Well, that's certainly that's certainly the ru the rumor going around. I mean, if you, as as we said before, I mean, go go there on a wet day and you know, just you know after a really long period of rain and what, take a walk around some there and see the bubbles coming up from uh, from the puddles and the the, the sheen of uh, the rainbow coloured sheen over some of them. But uh, there, but incidentally, I, I should quickly point out that it's a big weekend coming up at Calder, a big couple of days. Friday night, um, the Fast Friday, uh, both drag racing, off-street drag racing and roll racing, they can't run the full competition cars there, unfortunately. It's a huge waste, very disappointing, but they've had some really, really big turnouts for the uh, for the street cars. And this weekend, um, on both Friday, Friday night and the Fast Friday, if you're a bike fan, somebody's organised a sort of a meeting within a meeting. And I think there's about 40, uh, 40 bikes will be out there racing as well. So if you're into, into bikes, uh, they'll be out there racing on Friday night. Raction starts at about 5.30, goes through till about 11 o'clock. Uh, so that's uh, drag racing and then sort of about halfway through the night around sort of yeah, 7.30, 8 o'clock. They switch over to the roll racing, and if you haven't seen that before, it's uh, it's usually it's bloody hard to call. Um, I'll be out there doing the commentary again, so uh, yeah. So if, if you're in the area and you've got any uh, and you're, you're rented, that's going to be great. Also, the next day, I'm gonna I've got a busy weekend. I've mm -hmm. got to go straight out the next day because coming up is the Optima Batteries Ultimate Streetcar Challenge. And this is a really interesting uh, event. It's, uh, they're an American organization that run this thing. There's a huge field of streetcars of all sorts, and it's a little bit of everything. It's like there's there's drag racing, roll racing, there's uh, slaloms, there's the lap sprints, uh, looking to find in various classes the ultimate streetcar. And uh, that's happening on Saturday, pretty much all day, I think. And uh, as I said, I'll, I'll, I'm, for some reason, they've dragged me out to do the commentary on that as well. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time driving back and forwards across the city at all ungodly hours on the weekend. And uh, if my voice is giving out now, imagine what it's going to be like Saturday night at about 11 o'clock after a solid 14 hours of commentating by myself. 
But anyway, that's uh, but yeah. So so Calder Park is out there. They can't do anything. Rodney has um, Rodney has basically said, look, yeah, we, we might as well if we're gonna if it's gonna be kept, we might as well use it for something. But they're not spending you know huge amounts of money on it. They're doing basically the minimum required to keep it running. And if it starts making a profit, if it starts making enough money, they'll see whatever it makes, they'll put it back in there. But he's not he's not making any sort of speculative investment in the joint. It's uh it's gonna be so we're not going to see unfortunately we're not gonna see drag racing, you know, proper drag racing back there. The the plan was to have at least two major meetings in February. They were gonna basically close the circuit. For uh, for the last uh, last half of February, run a couple of drag race meetings. You know, give them a week to prepare the track, and then give them another week after the two meetings to uh, to clean the thing up again. Uh, didn't happen, and uh, according to people out there that uh, that I spoke to, the the thing was the problem with drag racing and uh, closing the circuit is you you close the circuit, you spend a week and a lot of money and time preparing it. And then it rains and nothing happens, and you've spent all that time and money, and you've closed, you've closed off two weeks of uh, two weeks of potential usage because the place is booked solid. This is the problem of you know not having enough racetracks around the place, and, and I mean, where I'm saying that, I mean, you know, up where you are, Mark. I mean, you've only got you know three or four in a state that bloody big. We're complaining because we've got four here, and all of them are booked booked to capacity every single weekend. There is something at Sandown, something at Calder, something at Winton and something at Phillip Island. That's, um, yeah, it's something that you <laughs> constantly have to explain to people that motor racing is actually a very small part of the operations of a motor racing circuit. Yeah. I well, mean, maybe that's not I... very small, but small. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's the thing. That's the thing with Sandown. I mean, it's running at a lot. Well, you know, the Melbourne Racing Club are saying it's running at a loss, and they're saying, "Well, it's booked out every single weekend, and it's booked out a lot during the week as well." I go past on the every time I go into Melbourne, I go past on the train. I look across, and you'll see something either in the car park, or the driver training, uh, advanced driver training, or there'll be ride days happening on the tr circuit itself during the week. It's booked out. There's a four wheel drive tr driver training centre down the bottom that's heavily booked so there's stuff happening every day so it's not as if there's not a demand for it but you know somebody from the racing club said the problem is the, the maintenance and the 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 land tax and the rates and everything else on it um they said if we if we if we charged what we needed to charge then then it wouldn't be booked out because we'd have to charge people so much money that the place would stay empty so but the interesting thing is that you know the uh the, the forces within the racing club, the horse racing club, who wanted desperately to get rid of it, have now lost a bit of power to a lot of people in the racing club, particularly a lot of older members, who are saying, yes, it will get us billions and billions of dollars. We have billions and billions of dollars. What do we need more for? Mm -hmm. you know, That's what they said before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... So they would like that. So they would like to. There is a group of people, particularly as an older people, who would like to keep it because it's very accessible. You know, they're saying about, oh, we're going to have this new place out at Pakenham. Um, Pakenham is twice as far as Sandown, and Sandown's far enough out of Melbourne as it is for a lot of them. So, you know, they they like the fact that they can just jump on the dandy, you know, the Pakenham line train. You know, uh, you know, forty five minutes from uh, fifty minutes from Melbourne. Jump, you know, step off the platform, walk down the and walk straight through the gate. So, and Pakenham, no, though it's near the train line, its accessibility is nowhere near what it is like Sandown. It's just it's a one lane, you know, one lane each way road. It's you know, it's just it's tight and it's bumpy. Um, yeah, I can understand them. Uh, would you want to really take your Lamborghini down that road? Uh, well, well, well yeah, I haven't, I haven't been to the horse to the track yet because they're going to they're going to you know, sort of re, rebuild the, the place. They, they're rebuilding Caulfield, 
Um, there's major there's major development going on there, and that's going to be the main thing. But they need this second. They need a secondary track so that you know if something happens to Caulfield, or when Caulfield needs a break, they're for midweek meetings and all the rest of it. They've got something that isn't going to be as expensive to run and to open as Caulfield is right now. Sandown does that. If you go past. You know, like once a month or something like that on a Thursday, there's a there's you there's a horse race at Sandown, but um, and that's and the people who and because it is a horse racing track, it's owned by the the Melbourne Racing Club. It's not the Melbourne Car Racing Club. It's the Melbourne Horse Racing Club, and uh, they're the, they're the people. They used to be, I think, of the Victorian Amateur Turf Club, the VATC. Yeah. Um, so, the, but. Uh, Melbourne, they're now the Melbourne Racing Club. They own Caulfield. They own the the, block, the land at Pakenham and the track that's out there at the moment, which they want to redevelop. And they own Sandown, and they wanted to get rid of Sandown. But to, and that's the plan. There's also problems, believe it or not, the council, which has spent, you know, the last forty years trying to close down Sandown because oh, the noise and the yahoos <laughs> and the, the the smell of burning rubber, and it's just it's a horrible, horrible place. I've suddenly realised that you know it's, it is actually one of the few things that brings outside yeah. the city of Greater Dandenong, <laughs> and it's also a great resource for a lot of the local community groups because they have the Vietnamese uh, New Year uh, celebrations there and the Cambodian New Year celebration. There's a Dutch festival there. There's a caravan and camping show, and then that's huge. I mean, that attracts well over 100,000 people over four days. It's massive. If you haven't gone out and seen that, um, I worked at it a couple of years, and I've also been out there just to have a look. It's massive. You know, four days of solid crowds. Um, so there, there's plenty to use. It's a, it's an underused venue. I, I, I was looking at doing something. Melissa and I were had talks with them years ago about doing something out at Sandown sort of a local version of the PRI show, and they were really, really keen. Where it fell over was, you know, we spoke to people within, you know, sort of the motorsport scene about, you know, doing something, in, and it was like, oh, no, we don't want to do that. It'll, you know, we'd have to put on special, more people at the gate, and, yeah, so anyway, it never, that never happened. Um, but, uh, yes, um, well, there you go. Mark, is one of, one of your guys, Richard, get yeah. back to... Hyundai, the elite racing is unattainable. I tell you what, I mean, Hyundai's at the top level. Hyundai's, I saw one for sale the other day, $45,000. Yeah, there's not as many up at that figure um, since the pandemic finished, but uh, there's still a few which had the lot. But the uh, the good XLs, the guys are getting around Bathurst in uh, 252. And I'm thinking, I just think to Tim Rouse, and I go, mate, is that real? And, I, and he said, yep, they've been doing a lot of development. And I'm thinking, I just gained five seconds, and they just gained five seconds. <laughs> I'm still, <laughs> I'm still dangling with my ass out of the back. It's your there. fault, Richard. I mean, yeah, they, it is my fault. Going, oh, God, Outram's just got it. He's just improved by five seconds. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Throw, throw another, bucket of, another bucket of money over here. Richard Outram's catching us. <laughs> it's, it's, who's, who brought their nitrous oxide bottle? <laughs> yeah, that would, be, that would be interesting. I mean, you have a look at some of those top cars. I mean, the standard is you know, unbelievable. Just, the quality. Well, yeah, you know, like you remember Triple Eight got into building a few of them for yeah, a while. Mm-hmm. He's still there. Um, young uh, Charlie no. Nash, yeah. Oh well, um, yeah, more yeah. than more than one car, several yeah. cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah they built, sixty they built... grand build, sixty eighty grand build or something. Um, it's like some Larry of the guys. Bergen, Larry Bergen yeah. said on the show years ago. He said if, if if HQ Holdens were the number one category in Australia, he said I could spend half a million dollars on one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I so saw. You can always that... find a way to spend money on motorsport. <laughs> There was one guy who had the interior of his car sprayed with a paint job, which looked like you could swim around in it, and it even had motifs stuck into the. <laughs> I like <laughs> that. <laughs> See, that's the drag racing. That's the one thing that they, I mean. The drag racing guys, of course, do it brilliantly. You have a look at some of the top door slammers <laughs> and all the rest of it. The attention to detail and the presentation of most drag cars is absolutely fantastic when you compare it with some of the circuit racing cars. And they're getting better. I mean, the, the, the whole rap thing has 
really helped a lot because you know now now it's basically just your imagination i remember sort of you know like the the old ian splat altered the bounty hunter had a most extraordinary paint job and it was a paint job but if something had happened to it if it had been in a crash or got scratched like if in the in the world of circuit racing <clears throat> it would have I think it probably took about three months to actually paint it. Um, nowadays, you would just uh, somebody would you know they would design it on a they would design it on a computer screen in in Illustrator or Photoshop or something like that, and say and press you know press Command P and just you know print it out on a sheet and Stick it'd be it more ready, to, ready to go go again. Uh, somebody said. Me as, Somebody sent me a thing. More and more people are, are wrapping their cars for the road too. Because somebody, I said something yeah. about sort of you know Getsy, the the paint all falling off the clear coat, and like you know I could never get it you know resprayed again. It cost more than the cars were. Someone said, "Why don't you get it wrapped?" And they sent me a link. And they had a look at this place, and it was like whatever color you want, and they're, they're sort of guaranteeing it for about five years or something. So yeah, the the, the technology's come along in leaps and. Uh, Leaps well, and bounds. Yeah, Jeremy saying that yeah, Triple Eight still apparently build a get Walkinshaw to build you some too because Walkinshaw <laughs> basically you know, hung the shingle out <laughs> in the front and said, um, you know, like we're we're opening a motorsport services division, and they're open to sort of anything. So if you go to them and say, hey, I want to build a sports sedan, I want to build a, a an Excel, I want to build anything, um, have a talk to them, and they will. You know, if you got enough of that, the folding stuff, they'll build it for you. So you could have, we could soon have a uh, we could soon have a Walkinshaw Racing Excel if somebody's got mm. uh, if somebody's got that sort of uh, that sort of silly money. Oh, there's guys with the money once out upon, there. <laughs> once yeah. upon a time, people with the uh, with that kind of uh, would, would um, money would be going to places like uh, you know K and A or mm -hmm. Elfin or whoever and getting them to build a sports sedan. But now it's one make racing that's attracting mm -hmm. this kind of thing. So yeah, it's um. But yeah, uh, uh, just as a just as I guess a little bit of a side note, the um, the uh, we've actually had a um, uh, relatively new touring car series spring up here in Queensland that's um, under um, XLs uh, as far as price goes, called um, Hot Hatch Cup, um, which is yeah, right. we're, we're the racing we're the racing gets us. Yes. So yeah, I, yeah, you know gets us. I mean, it, the category kind of came out like the blueprint for the category was. Um, uh, the Mazda twos that used to run in group yeah. in um in class E of group E, and um uh and there's a uh, but there's a few cars that have sprung up out of that. There's also Suzuki Swifts now with Ford Fiestas, um yeah Mazda twos, Hyundai Getzes, Honda Jazz, and a uh, um and a Suzy Swift now as well. Well, um, have a look at uh, have a look at the Thai the Thai Super Series. I mean, that's a series that is just taking off like nobody's because I'd love to get over there. In fact, I had a look at trying to get over there for the street race that I think is Bangasen, I think it's called. It's on along the around the beach there, and uh, I, I I looked at it and the accommodation was really affordable, and then, and then I looked at the airfares. Um, mm -hmm. Airfares to Thailand are very very expensive. So well, even if you can true. afford to, uh, even if you can afford to, you know, I mean, the hotels were like ridiculously, you know, just seven nights for $427 Australian in a really nice yeah. looking, you know, overlooking the beach and all the rest of it was fantastic. I went, oh, well, yes, I could probably afford that. And then I looked at the airfares and it was like, you know, return flight, you know, two and a half thousand dollars. It used to be $250 uh, a few years back. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Jared, uh, Jared is saying that Zach Brown wants to do supercar engines. There's obviously a, a quick, because that's one of the arguments that they've used, like in terms of they say, well, why don't they just use NASCAR crate engines, which is something that, you know, Jason Bright was arguing that, you know, 10, 10 or more, more years ago. It's like, you know, why are we spending all this money, you know, building these ridiculously expensive engines to get, you know, 640 horsepower out of them when we can just sort of, you know, go online and order something from Roush Engineering that comes in a crate and puts out 720 out of the box. Yeah. Well, the reason for that, of, of course, was they were trying to get manufacturers into the category, which mm -hmm. eventually, but all too briefly, worked with Nissan Volvo and um, Betty's privateer Mercedes-Benzes. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the reason. But... Um, 
that's it all fell apart. gone now. Yeah. 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 That's uh, yeah. that's it. But anyway, that was uh, yep. that's that's the weekend. And um, yep. so what have we got coming up? Uh, coming up this weekend, we've we, we, with China. China this week. China this week. Yeah, right? I am. Yes. Yes. It is. Yep. Yep. Mm. So yeah, so they're coming back and there's a sprint race, the first of the sprint races for the this year. Is... Some of the drivers aren't pleased, particularly Max Verstappen saying we shouldn't be going, you know, we shouldn't be having a sprint race on this this circuit. First time back for a long time, and we really he doesn't feel it's suited for the concept of the sprint races. So uh that'll be but Until... once again, that's in our time slot. Yeah. Until yeah. he gets a point um at the end of the sprint race, and then he'll be happy. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, I I hope they've screwed the um uh the the covers on the drains down properly this time. <laughs> yes, sure, that's Mark uh, yeah. Yes. I'm I'm sure that's been fixed, and I'm sure the person <laughs> responsible has been shot. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Nothing to see. They know how to get the trains to run on time in China. Let me tell you something <laughs> like that. And I I personally welcome our Chinese overlords. Um, <laughs> But the but yeah, the, 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 it'll be interesting. That's coming up on the weekend. So so we've got that to watch pretty much at the same time in opposition to it. We've got the uh, supercars at uh, at at, at Topor. Uh, as I said, if you're in Melbourne, head out to uh, Calder Park either on Friday night for Fast Friday or for the um for the streetcar the Optima Battery Streetcar Challenge on Saturday. You got two really big days. In both cases, there's no. Uh, entry list at the moment for the for basically just but run what you bring. If you've got a fast street car out there and you want to take it, you want to get plenty of runs, head out to Calder Park on Friday. If you get there early enough, get there at around 4 35 o'clock, get it straight in and scrutineered, get into the staging lanes. And people were just, you know, last time around, people were getting like eight and you know, six to eight runs over the course of the night because they're just driving down, turning around, coming straight back into the staging lanes and racing again. And they just did that all night. They did it for the drags. And then as soon as the roll racing came around, they just did. There was just constant laps, race, come back, race, come back. Uh, towards the end of the night, we were almost begging people, saying, you know, come on, guys, there's still time. You can still race. And people were going, no. No, no. I said cars worn out. We're worn out. We've had so many, so many damn runs. Um, it was a great, yeah, big, big, big night, big crowd out there. And uh, I think the, the weather forecast is going to be certainly going to be chilly out there on Friday night, but there's no rain forecast. So, uh, so head out there fast Friday, as I said, gates open about five o'clock. Uh, for spectator and all the rest of it. So uh, you can get down there. The, the sooner you get down there, because it does get crazy um, getting out there. If, if you if you leave it too late, if you leave it sort of after five o'clock, you get that peak hour traffic coming out of the city along the Tuller, and it, it can take it can take you more than an hour to get out there. So uh, if you can uh, leave work early, tell the boss that you know that you know that uh, somebody somebody called you and you know your your, your dog is been hit by a car or something or whatever make make some excuse get out as early as you can and uh, get your car out to to calder park for fast friday and also uh he's there for saturday for the uh big race there as well okay guys i think that now i'll just let you know tomorrow night on the program uh we've got uh if you haven't seen it on uh on youtube yet jackson evans will be joining us also uh george medecki joins us Carl Cox oh. joins us, and our in studio oh. guest is a young carter, carter called Matt Basso, who's racing this week. That's another really big event coming up this week up at Seymour, the Golden Lions track up at Seymour. Over 400 entries for the Australian Karting Championships. It's going to be absolutely huge up there. Well, we're joined by Matt Basso to talk about that, and also the fact is this kid's like 13, won a few state championships, won some Australian titles. He's got over 60,000 social media followers. His, his media game is absolutely spot on. He could teach a lot of the supercar teams and a lot of people, you know, really good things about how to promote yourself. He's very, very, uh, very switched on. And for someone who's 13, 
he was just so comfortable in front of the. He was just so good. He, as we said, he gives good guests. He was terrific. Also, our band tomorrow night. If you like old fashioned rock and roll, uh, to, tomorrow night on the program, our band is the Dirty Rats. They're joining us tomorrow night as well. That's nine thirty, Channel Thirty One, Melbourne. Or you can watch the extended version with bonus music, bonus interview content on demand on the In Pit Lane YouTube channel. Incidentally, if you haven't subscribe to us on the youtube channel if if you have over 100,000 subscribers youtube send you a lovely silver plaque oh, well, we're only wow. about 98,000 short of that at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and i really like the night a little bit off the bottom <laughs> but we are desperately close to 3,000 subscribers i think we need oh. about another about another hundred, about another hundred and ten subscribers, and we'll be over the three thousand. So before I die, I would really like to say, well, we've got, th we have now cracked the three thousand mark. So um, if you haven't, if you watch the YouTube channel at all, because we we get the figures from YouTube, and it sort of tells you, okay, this week you had you know, eighteen thousand people watch the YouTube channel. Of those, four percent subscribed. So uh, if you watch the YouTube channel at all, just click that subscribe button, click the notification bell. It makes a huge difference to the algorithm. The more people who do that, the more YouTube promote it to other people who might be interested, and that's how these things become, become viral. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, a show a couple of weeks ago, um, we had like, you know, in the space of 24 hours, we had about 4,500 views. Um, because for just some reason, somebody somewhere said, oh, have a look at this, and it just went overnight. It went from, like, you know, 240 views to, to over 4,000 views, just like that. So, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, um, as uh, as Marcus saying, learn from the 13-year-old grassroots racing. Yeah, very much so. Got his head switched on the right way, was talking about sort of, you know, like the, the future pathway into – into things like GT racing and sports cars. Um, he's not sort of, you know, oh, yeah, I'm going to go up to, I'm going to be a Formula One driver. I want to race supercars. No, he was much more switched on than that. Lovely family. The whole family came in. It was a family night out, and uh, we had a had a ball with it. So be watching tomorrow night uh, on uh, on Channel 31 or on the YouTube channel and check out young Matt Basso. He's a very impressive young young man, and good luck to him and all the competitors at Seymour on the weekend. I think there's a live stream, but I think you've got to pay for it, I'm, and I'm not sure how much it is, but it'll be really good racing with 400, 400 carts uh, from all, not just all over Australia, because there's uh, there's international drivers as well. It's a really big event. Okay, everybody, we have uh, we've, gone, we've gone over our hour already, and uh, that's without mentioning MotoGP once. So, uh, <laughs> or so uh, we'll Le Mans and, or the... Um... Hypercars, who are running uh, both at Imola and at oh. Long Beach. Oh, with, right. Um, so that's this weekend as Long well. Yes, on Long Beach, isn't it? Yep. This week or next weekend? Holy yep. cow. No. Where are we going to? Yeah. No, Long Beach, we're, we're up there now. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. Um, and All also, motorsport. Queensland Raceway is on this yeah. weekend coming as well. Uh, round two of the Motorsport Australia State Championships, which yeah. haven't raced at Queensland Raceway. Maybe for, a decade. Okay. Not that long. Wow. Uh, um, well, yeah, uh, because uh, motorsport, is uh, like the state championships, haven't been a part of uh, it, it, the 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 double ASA slash cams divide. Mm. So um, I would have to look it up. It has been a while, and I'm really looking forward to having. Uh, the uh, Motorsport Australia categories uh, run uh, running at um, at QR and yeah, it'd be brilliant. Yeah, well, that'll that, that'll that'll certainly be good. So if you're up in Queensland, head out to uh, head out to Queensland Raceway because, as Mark says, it's they've made some really big improvements out there. It looks like mm. everybody who's been out there just says it's fantastic. Uh, what well, the improvements Tony's made out there. So uh, get out there on the weekend and uh, and support grassroots racing because that's the that's the way to go. As um, as Mark said before, yeah, grassroots racing is the the way to go. Um, somebody said something about Winter Historics. Yes, we are going up to Winter Historics. Um, we will uh, we will definitely be up there for at least uh, for at least one day. I've already booked some accommodation up there, so it's pr pretty expensive. But we haven't done it for 
a few years now, so I really, really desperately wanted to go back. Um, go back. I can also um, say that uh, it's looking likely at this stage that uh, In Pit Lane will once again be providing some coverage of the Baskerville Historics in Tasmania. They've been in touch with us and said, you know, would you guys be interested? Yes, yes, of course we'd be interested in coming back. So we, we've been putting that all together. Also, some uh, some possible big news coming uh, for some other, some live streaming stuff later in the year, some major uh, some major stuff. Uh, we've been approached by a, by a major corporation who uh, are interested in doing some stuff with us. So we will uh, we will do that. Uh, hopefully, that fingers crossed that will all come together, and uh, you will see us uh, all over the place in all sorts of interesting uh, all sorts of interesting places. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, everybody. Now there'll be no. Um, I'm letting everybody know there'll be no uh, full course yellow next week. Anzac Day Eve. I've got um, <laughs> involved in what I was just saying with uh, certain people. I've got meetings and all sorts of things. Uh, I won't. Uh, I won't be here uh, on Wednesday. I'll be somewhere else that I can't disclose at the moment. So, um, yeah, so there'll be no full course yellow uh, next week and then we'll uh, probably come back the, the week after. But there will, of course, be an episode of, uh, of In Pit Lane uh, next week as well. So uh, on Thursday night. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining us. I uh, really appreciate it. And we'll see, uh, we'll see you uh, in, in, on full course yellow in two weeks' time or tomorrow night or next week on In Pit Lane. Until then, thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.